Good evening. My name is Minister Johnny Banks Sr. I'm the Executive Director of Anaka Midnight. Anaka Midnight is located at 400 West 76th Street in Suite 206. We can be reached at every code 773-488-2960. Uh, it is great to be back on the show again as to talk about what Anaka Midnight is doing, uh, to talk about some of the things that's going on in our community, uh, in, this, in this city, in this state, our nation, and our world. There's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, we want to try to keep it as local as possible. Uh, we may have to uh, go into some other realms of, of information, but we want to try to keep everything as local as possible to deal with some of the things that are happening right here in Chicago, how we can address them, how we can take a look at them, how they impact and not only the lives of myself and you, Darius, but our families and, and our loved ones. What is what is going on and what, what can we do? What kind of information can we share to make a difference? I have... Uh, 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 with me, Darius Ballinger. He's the executive director of Chasing 23, uh, a youth organization designed to uh, connect uh, with the young people of the day, doing mentoring, doing our, our workshops and training. He's one of the brighter young people I've met in a long time. And I said, Darius, come on and join me so the people can get to know you, know what you're doing out here, and, we, and, and, and I can have a younger person to dialogue with about some of the issues of our times. Many times... Uh, through, through no fault of people who are trying to, to uh, disseminate information, there's not a yin and a yang involved. So it can become quite misconstrued or seen as one way. So I'm really grateful to have you here. And if you could just kind of take a minute to tell the people about uh, uh, Chasing 23 and what it does. Okay, okay. Minister, I thank you for having me here today. Uh, thank you for everyone tuning in today to talk about a very important subject. Uh, so a little bit about me and my work that I do. Uh, as the minister introduced me, I am the executive director of Chasing 23, um, which is a youth organization that's driven towards empowering young people through academics, through community work, um, and, and through just a holistic approach to life. And uh, just today I, I was asked, actually, what, what is Chasing 23 and, and how did it come about? Uh, and I'm a fairly young guy. Uh, and at my age now of 25, um, the the thought process behind t Chasing 23 was that it was something that had to do with my age. Um, and it did have an age significance, but not necessarily mine. Um, April 12, 2013, um, I was, uh, I went through a tragic loss um, of a dear friend of mine, um, Wayne Drummer. Uh, he was 23, and, and he, through Wayne, I was inspired to do something different. Um, that's how the name Chasing 23 came about. Um, and through that good mentorship that Wayne provided me, uh, now we want to give that back to the young people. And uh, we believe mentoring is one of the ways to take back our community um, yeah. and build a better community for the future. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, we, we just want to jump right into it. We know that, you know, this time is going to go back so quick. So we want, what I wanted to talk, what us to discuss is this whole, the, you know, as we, as we deal with all of the issues that's going on in the community, it's one that doesn't seem to... It gets addressed, but I don't think it, it goes in depth. And the whole thing of violence, we talk about violence, mm -hmm. but violence takes on a lot of shapes, sizes, and forms. Yes, sir. Violence happens in many different ways. Uh, you know, we got gang violence. We got violence that's precipitated by drug sales and drug use. We got domestic violence. Uh, we got uh, family violence of, of uh, uh, lack of parent parenting skills as... as uh, uh, upon children, so we just and I could go on and on. We got we got um, ignorance that produces violence, you know, and and all of these things uh, produce different forms and different types. But the thing that's so interesting to me is uh, Mahatma Gandhi had a quote that the worst form of violence is poverty, hmm. you know, and 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 I don't think we we talk about poverty enough. And and listeners, uh, I want you to call in if you have a. Uh, uh, want to give us some feedback or, or talk about what you think poverty is or how do you think poverty is affecting your community? How did you overcome it? Because the reality is uh, there's this perception that we got, we, got, we got public prosperity, but we got private uh, uh, poverty. Mm -hmm. so, so publicly, it looked like we're prospering, but privately, we're suffering in poverty. And I don't think people get it. And I'll give you an example. And, and I want you guys to try to grasp this for a minute. Uh, 
I am just as a, I'm, a, I'm a product of Inglewood. I'm just as elated as anybody else to watch the good things that are happening in the community of Inglewood. And I love the public displays, dis displays of prosperity that's going on in my community. Uh, the rebuilding of hospitals, uh, uh, the Starbucks that just came, the Whole Foods, Chipotle is coming, Villa is coming. All these places are coming. But some people don't know Inglewood used to look better than downtown. 63rd and Halstead was one of the greatest communities for shopping and family in the city of Chicago. And we're talking about just maybe 30 years ago. And 30 years later, we are arrive, We are trumpeting the, 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 a few stores coming in because it gives us something to feel good about. Finally, something is happening in the community. Mm -hmm. But nobody is touching the poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, still, Whole Food is not hiring felons. If a man still has, a, with as many men in Inglewood that need a job, uh, which is, you know, so we still got this same thing. So it's, it's the permeation. And so we struggle with this because, you know, you say, well, what are some of the, if you looked at violence, say, what, what, what would violence look like? Violence would look like wealth on one hand, but no work on the other hand. Somebody's in poverty. We got all this wealth, but we got abject poverty on the other hand. That's what I'm talking about. We talk about pleasure without conscience when you got people who can take their pleasure at the expense of poor people. You know, and so the people can't make a living wage. They can't do what they need to do for themselves or their family. They have to, they have to supplement their income with a link card. That's called poverty. And my people are going to perish because they don't get the knowledge. We're making it. No, you're not making it. The, the link card with a job say you ain't making it. And we don't, we don't, we don't get that. So if you had to chime in, Darius, if you say, and if I asked you this question like, what does poverty look like in a community that you may live in or you go in? What does it look like for you? Uh, the poverty in the community looks a few, a, a few different ways. Mm -hmm. Um when you when you when you think of uh of wealth we would look at things like uh, of course the income level which would be one um we will look at the the assets of the of the community mm -hmm. um is it is it a rental community is it an owner's community um the educational attainment within the community um I, 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 is it a is it a community of of graduates or is it a community of dropouts mm -hmm. so taking a looking at it from a few different ways. So often we can attribute wealth or prosperity with the latest model car or the latest model clothing um, when necessarily the, the car is on a loan and the clothing um, will de depreciate it and can't really gain any value anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what it is important to look at when we think of poverty, we have to look at first the unemployment within the community we have to look at the educational attainment within a community. And something else, Minister, that I think we should start looking at is uh, the way the dollar circulates in the community. Absolutely. The way the dollar circulates in the community is a real good way to determine the wealth of the community. There's, 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 if, if 90% or 75, I'm not, we're going we're gonna to keep, let's keep it real simple. Mm -hmm. If 50% of the money that comes into a community leaves, that community is subject to poverty. We're not going to give it no 90% or 80%. Mm -hmm. We're going to say 50%. I would like to see what the African-American community would look like if 50% of the money spent in it stayed in it. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what it looked like. It would look like Black Wall Street. Absolutely. You know, we know what Absolutely. it would look like. Absolutely. And so uh, the struggle is we're seeing this, uh, but we're not doing anything about it. We have a call on the line. Let's see what, Let's take a call. what our caller have to say. Caller, are you there? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Hey, good evening. Yes, sir, right on, right on the money. But the thing is that all the construction that's going up here in Chicago, these tens of millions is going like, right going to be going on with this Chinese thing and in and, and, uh, uh, Chicago uh, uh, trauma center, and not one African American owned uh, construction company or one Hispanically owned construction company got a penny out of it. Not a penny and there's sixty million dollars, seventy million dollars, thirty five million dollars worth of construction going up. So that's why the kids they look at this and say, you know what? You go to school, 
We run the trade, and then they don't hire us. And that's been going on for years in this country, but the saddest part of it all is us. Yeah, let's, let's, let, let, us, let us try to respond to that, because, you know, no matter how we slice it, you know, we can see it in a certain way. How does it affect children? Mm -hmm. We have a, 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 a whole community of children that due to poverty, they want to say gun violence. I'm saying none. Due to poverty, they can't go outside. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm st stuck in the vestiges of poverty and I'm the parent, well, I don't necessarily want to go outside, be outside, or do certain things because I don't have the resources to do it with. Mm -hmm. So I stay in because... I don't want to go out. When my children stay in because in order for them to go out, I got to go out with them. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much the gun violence. It's not so much they can't go outside. Poverty has whole families where they don't want to be out, out in the open mm -hmm. because of they don't have the things that they need just to be a part of some the everyday structures of life. And that, that is a, that is a, um, that's a heck of a thing, man, when you deal with, um, uh, Carla was just talking about the commerce around around uh, 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 construction, mm -hmm. but where mm -hmm. you have commerce and no morality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So here we got commerce, but we got all these immoral people because mm -hmm. poverty produces immorality. So how would I want to come and do something legitimate and work? Because uh, I, I employ people, and I know many people who just simply don't want to work mm -hmm. because they'd rather be into some immoral actions, immoral behavior, or immoral activities that they won't have to do anything on the up and up. That's called poverty. You know, what do you, what do you think about that? To, to, to the caller's point, I think it's something, again, we talk about infrastructure, mm -hmm. and that's something that we should be very mindful of is when these public institutions are built in a community, the, the St. Bernard that was built on, on 63rd, uh, we have to start again to create that infrastructure within if this hospital is going to be within this community it should serve the community holistically from the employment down to the 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 the, the recipients the clients that come in mm -hmm. so making sure that, that that again that the dollar is circulating so that everyone feels um, um welcomed in this community is something very important and and i like what you said again minister that so often we look at the violence that goes on in these communities, what we don't look at is the root of it, mm -hmm. the, 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 everything that, that kind of goes into it, right? I, I think I seen this picture on social media the other day where you see the tip of an iceberg, but you don't see the, the glacier that's under the water. So we have to start to pay attention to the glacier that's under the water. Absolutely. So when you look at violence, you have to think of defunded schools. You have to think of... Um, the job proximity, how far do people have to travel to go to a job? Um, we have to look at the number of health care recipients. It, it, we have to understand the dynamics of these communities and not just um, read the headline and just assume that this is just mm -hmm. a, a group of people that, that want to act out uh, savagely. We have to understand that this is a cry for help. Um, violence is that cry that we're seeing right now coming out of these communities that have been um, just... Uh, 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 politically uh, defunded, mm -hmm. politically defunded, um, and and now we have to deal with that. We have to deal with that through a, a very um, holistic approach. So the caller was right. That hospital that has to be built, construction workers from the community should have been living there because when the hospital opens up, people from the community will go there. Yeah, one of the one of the one of the facts of hist one of the historical facts of America is that was a revolt that was based on taxation without representation. In 2016, we have taxation without representation. If the buffoonery we've been watching on TV around this presidential stuff, if we think that stuff makes any sense, it is, it is what the colonial people didn't have. We got a picture of how it looks. We know what this stuff looks like. There's no faking it. There's no playing with it. We see what it looks like to be a taxpaying citizen and not be represented for your interests. So uh, you're a taxpaying citizen, but the bricks is crumbling in your community. The roads are in disrepair. Uh, 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 the, the elected officials don't have anything to do with you. And when they see with you, they look at you with disdain. Mm -hmm. If you ask them for something, they want to know why you're talking to them. 
These are the results we get from the people that we have to vote for. And, 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 and it's a shame. But that's called because people in poverty just go along with anything. Mm -hmm. Hoping that it get better one day. The Lord is going to make a way. No, no, we have to stop that. And I, and I hope, artists, that you'll listen. We have to stop that. Because one of the things that's so, that's so sad is science and religion go together. If you understand religion, you need to understand science. If you understand science, you need to understand religion. And you'll understand how things really work in this world. Those two things go together. Yes, you know, and when we don't have these things working for us, when we just think religion, where religion leads you to science, get up and do something. That's what religion is supposed to do. It's supposed to lead you to get up and do something. That's called the science of how it works. And people need to know that just like you need to know the Lord's Prayer or some other, some other ritual that you do regularly in your religious beliefs. Yeah, we have another caller. Caller, are you there? Caller? Let's, let's keep moving, Darius. Let's, let's definitely keep moving. I, I like that idea uh, yeah. uh, that, that you brought up about... Uh, Science and religion. Mm -hmm. So I'm a student of the University of Illinois at Chicago, uh, part of the, the COUPA program. That's the Center for Urban Planning and Public Affairs. And so one of the things we talked about um, in my coursework is uh, the current state of uh, global, global warming. So mm -hmm. this idea of climate change and all of these things that are, that are, that are going on. Um, and, and on that end, uh, our, our Republican, leading Republican nominee, or the Republican nominee, uh, Mr. Trump, says that nuclear warheads um, are the greatest threat to our country. Um, and our President Obama says that that is climate change. But neither there, however. Um, back down to this idea of religion and science. Mm -hmm. So in class, we're discussing this idea of, right, of, of so what's imposing this, this, this global warming, this climate change? What's changing the climate? And then on, on, on the religion end, we have a group of people that are down um, in southern Southern, the southern part of the United States that believe that this is a part of religion, that there are droughts, um, that it's been biblically written that there are seasons. There are seasons mm -hmm. to rain and there are seasons to be dry. So that's the religious belief. And then we have a scientific belief that says the burning of trees, which creates palm oil, is causing this, this global warming. Mm -hmm. It's causing this global warming. So this is a case of point where we have science saying man-made things are polluting the world, but then we also have another end that says, well, based off our religious beliefs, the world will go through seasons. And so we have to be mindful, Minister, mm -hmm. and now to our listeners out there, that we that we take both things in. Absolutely. We don't denounce the religion, nor do we denounce the science of it. Taking the holistic approach and understanding both of them is very important. Mm -hmm. And see what and see it's just let me let me piggyback on what you just said right quick. This is how simple that is. A tree lives every year. It, it produces fruit, it produces leaves, it produces sap or other products for humanity. Mm -hmm. And then it goes through a hibernation period to restore itself and come back again. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what that almost sounds like some religious, mm -hmm. but it's science. So we got living organisms attacking other living organisms. Mm -hmm. So we got man destroying himself because he does not believe is religion and don't understand science. Mm. You feel me? Because yeah. if you believed your religion, if your faith was what you said it was supposed to be, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't take you wouldn't take uh, uh, the opportunity to take life from any form. Because we are to give it. And, and if you understand science, you would do the things that scientifically creates more of what you need. And that's what we're struggling now as we see uh, uh, great numbers of high rises and buildings going up in small places and there's wealth and prosperity all over the city of Chicago. And we are happy about a grocery store. Hmm. So you have to understand the dynamics, how, how vulgar that sounds when a person sits and thinks and looks at it and tries to take it and shape it. You say, man, something wrong with this picture. You mean all I got to clap about is a store, not the, the development of new houses. And, and all I'm looking at is abandoned, boarded up, homes and properties and vacant lots no new development but I'm supposed to be overly elated about a store that really nobody can afford in the community it's just like it's just like poor people wearing Jordans mm. can't afford them 
but since they market it toward us, we go. Can't afford it, but since it's marketed toward us, we'll do it. That is absolute insanity. Hmm. And so it's that it's that whole thing of, of science without the human humanality involved in it. Then we got a and call. We got another caller? Yep. Let's take this caller. Call, are you there? Hello? Uh, yes. And uh, listen, it's so good to see you back again. I'm glad to see you. Thank you. I heard you mention something earlier. As an older man, I remember there was a time you could walk from 63rd and Halsted to 63rd and Stony. You could find everything on God's green earth, whatever you want. time you got to Stone Island, you could stop, eat, and look at a good baseball game. They used to play right there in that park. Mm -hmm. A little older, Johnny. And another thing, as when I was younger, I never didn't know what property was. I never know who had poor, who was rich. Everybody has something. If you didn't have something, you always have people to give you a pull up. Mm -hmm. Now these days, people don't even know the people who live. Got someone else on the line. They don't even pay no attention. They don't even know your neighbor next door. Absolutely, it's so sad. And then I heard the young man said uh, something about people not working in St. Bernard Hospital in their own community. Johnny said something at the beginning of the show. People, more people don't want to work. They say, well, I want a job. Get me a job. But they don't want to work. They want to hang in the streets and do what the heck they're doing. Something that don't, it's just, it's just, you know what, our minds are corrupt. Mm -hmm. Our minds are not as it was. Absolutely. Let me, let me speak to that caller because we, we almost done. And I want to say something. People in their, in their, Imaginations want to work, but in reality, they don't have the means, the modes, or the methods to to get a job or, or procure one and keep it. Because, like I said, it's an imagination. It's not because in order to do that, you got to make some sacrifices. I have to sacrifice. I can't smoke anymore. I got to sacrifice. I can't can't drink. It's some things I can't do uh, if I'm going to have legitimate employment. There are some sacrifices I got to make. See, we worship jobs, but we won't make the sacrifice to get it. Just like we worship God, but we won't sacrifice by changing our lives. We worship Michael Jordan, but we won't do what Jordan did. See, we are worshipers, but we don't make sacrifice. And sacrifice, what I worship, means that you basically are dead. So if you are worshiping someone, but you won't sacrifice to, to make that your reality, then something's wrong. It's called being in poverty. And that's what we're going to be talking about because people need to get it. And I understand it from my perspective. Darius understands it from his perspective. And we need to bring these perspectives together to start a process of changing stuff around. So, Darius, before we, before we close, uh, uh, kind of sum up what we've, been, what we've been talking about for the audience. So, I think it, to, to piggyback off what the caller said and to, and to bring it all in, it definitely starts within our mind. It definitely starts with in us as beings, getting up, going out. We know it's been written mm -hmm. that faith without works is dead. So you have to get up. You have to have that belief and you have to go forth. But again, we talked about this idea of poverty, right? And, and so to our viewers out there today that, that, that's, that's tuning in, understand that despite what your circumstance says around you, you define your situation. That's right. You define your situation. We don't want to get into the habit that we look at um, wealth always sometimes as something monetary mm -hmm. or something financial. We can have a wealth of knowledge here with Justin within this conversation. We can have a wealth of knowledge with the things that we do within our community. So leading with our mind and shaping what poverty looks like to us and not letting our situation define us That's is right. how we can go about doing this. Man, you, you, you did very well with that. Listen, my name is Minister Johnny Banks Sr. I'm the Executive Director of Anake at Midnight. I have Darius Valinger, Executive Director of Chasing 23. We're on every, every Monday at 5 p.m. Please tune in. Bring some ideas. Call us. Let us know what you're thinking. Don't let us sit here and just be talking here. <laughs> let us, let us, let's have some back and forth and some give and take because... We are just trying to bring some consciousness to, to our people. We're trying to bring some consciousness to this city, uh, to our nation, to this world. That things have to be different because public prosperity does not look well when you've got private poverty. It just doesn't. Listen, our time goes very fast. Uh, thank you for, for joining. Thank you for watching. And uh, 
Remember, in the darkest hour, truth and knowledge is away. Good night and God bless you.